Welcome to Lecture 8 of Advanced Microeconomics with me, Dr. Craig Webb. In today's lecture, we will be looking at bargaining theory. Now, bargaining theory is now quite a large literature. There are book-level treatments on bargaining theory. And so, as with our coverage of auctions, we will not try to uh, do an extensive survey of results in bargaining theory in this lecture. Rather, we will focus on one particular paper and cover it in great detail. In particular, we will be looking at John Nash's original paper, The Bargaining Problem, from 1950 in Econometrica, my favourite paper ever published in economics. So, lots to do today. Let's get started. So let's introduce the idea of a bargaining game. The brilliance of Nash's approach is that it abstracts away from all unnecessary details. So we're not going to model the bargaining process as such. Rather, we're simply going to describe a bargaining game as a set of utility pairs. So I get some utility and you get some utility. And there are various possibilities within that set. So a bargaining game is a set will typically denote capital S or capital T and so on. And we make the following assumptions, which we will discuss uh, a little further in the next few slides. So we're going to assume that this set S is a subset of the plane, which essentially means we're modeling two player bargaining games. So every point in the set S has two dimensions, a utility for player one and a utility for player two. These utilities, more specifically, are von Neumann Morgenstern utility numbers. We'll discuss that a little more in what follows. We'll make several technical assumptions, in particular that a bargaining game is non empty, so uh, it has some alternatives contained within the set. It is compact. Now, compactness is a deep mathematical property, um, but Essentially, what it will mean for us is that the set includes its own boundary. And you could, for instance, contain the set S within a large enough square. We'll also assume that the set S is a convex set. So if we remember the definition of a convex set, all it means is that if we take any two points within S, connect them with a line, then every single point along that line is also contained in the set S. We will call elements of the bargaining set S alternatives. So a typical alternative could be an element lowercase a, uh, which belongs to S. And remember that A has two dimensions in this uh, setup today. So the first coordinate A1 is the amount of utility being assigned to player 1. And the second coordinate A2 is the utility assigned to player 2. The final assumption we will make is that the set S, the bargaining game, contains the origin 0, 0, which is the disagreement point. So if bargaining breaks down for any reason, if the players cannot uh, decide on anything better, this is the default disagreement point where they both receive utility 0. Now remember that von Neumann Morgenstern utility functions are unique up to affine transformations. So we can take any utility numbers and multiply them by a positive constant. And we could also add any number, positive or negative, to those utility numbers and come up with another von Neumann Morgenstern utility function. So by assigning or by fixing the utility for both players of the disagreement point to be zero, we're essentially removing a degree of freedom. We can no longer add or subtract whatever we would like to these utility functions here. Um, but we're doing this for the sake of making the presentation simple. All of the axioms and so on that we will state today, assuming that the disagreement utility is zero, could be generalized in a very straightforward way to allow the disagreement point to be any particular pair of utility numbers. So um, this is something to think about after we've been through the lecture. Think about how you could rewrite some of the axioms to allow for a very general disagreement point. 
Today, we'll keep it simple and just fix that point. So from this point forward, our utility numbers, we'll be able to multiply them by positive numbers to derive other von Neumann Morgenstern utilities, but we will no longer be able to add or subtract anything because we're keeping disagreement and utility fixed at zero. In the two-player setup that we're working with today, bargaining games have a very nice uh, graphical representation and we'll work with this extensively today. Most of my lectures, I prefer to work pen and paper and do the analysis, but the vast majority of today's lecture will be done with diagrams on the slides to show you the main ideas in the clearest way possible. So here's how we would represent a bargaining game graphically. So on the... Um, x-axis we're going to put utility for player one and on the y-axis we'll put utility for player two and zero is the um, origin and here is a typical bargaining game it's a, a non-empty compact and convex set denoted capital s and in particular the origin our zero point is the disagreement point element a inside this uh, bargaining set S, a typical element that we call an alternative, again has two dimensions, A1, a utility for player one, and A2, a utility for player two. So let's have a look at some examples of bargaining games to show the type of scenarios where this model of a bargaining game is appropriate, and also to explain why some of the structural assumptions are also appropriate, why we can assume that the bargaining set is a convex set. So here's our first example. Example one, dividing a dollar. A very simple game. Suppose that two players are deciding how to share one dollar or one unit of any currency or indeed any amount of any particular currency. We will imagine that both players have von Neumann Morgenstern utilities, U1 and U2. And let's assume that these are strictly increasing and concave functions. And we'll set the utility functions by choosing the location so that the utility of zero dollars for both players is equal to zero. So that will be our disagreement point. The players must decide how to share a dollar. And if they fail to agree, then they both get zero. The bargaining game in this case is the set of all utility pairs, a utility for player one of x and a utility for player two of an amount y, where x and y are both non-negative and they sum up to less than or equal to one. We can represent the dividing a dollar game as follows. So here I've drawn a bargaining set S, which is a convex set. The disagreement point is, of course, the origin zero and the utility of zero dollars for both players is set equal to zero. But how do I know that this is a convex set? Well, if I look at the point um, where both players receive a utility of 0.5, the utility of one dollar, that would correspond to um, essentially a coin toss situation where they flip the coin and one of the players receives all of the money. Now, these players both have strictly concave utility functions and so would rather actually split the money than take this gamble. So if we look at this next point, the utility of half a dollar for player one and the utility of half a dollar for player two, then this has greater utility for both players than the coin toss situation. This type of argument can be used to show that S is indeed a convex set. As a second example, let's consider two players bargaining over a non-divisible object or an indivisible object. So, for instance, perhaps two players are bargaining over who gets to own a particular painting, something that cannot be chopped in half or neither player would want chopped in half. So we'll imagine that the outcomes are either yes, you own the painting or no, you don't own the painting. Now we can set the von Neumann Morgenstern utilities for this problem by setting the disagreement point where neither player gets the painting so that player one's utility of no is equal to player two's utility of no, both equal to zero. 
so that would be our disagreement point zero zero and we can also set the scale of the utility functions so that the utility of receiving the painting for either player is equal to one. In this case, the bargaining game seems to be the following set, a set S which contains only three points, the point one zero, the point zero one, and the point zero zero. Graphically, it looks like this, three separate points um, on this diagram and of course this is not a convex set. So how can we motivate Nash's assumption that bargaining games are convex sets in a situation like this? The idea is to allow for lotteries to be used. So if we let capital X be the set of physical alternatives, so these are the actual outcomes not the utility numbers, but the actual outcomes. So there are three possibilities. A yes-no outcome, player one gets the painting, player two doesn't. A no-yes outcome, and a no-no outcome, where neither player gets the painting. Well, we could take this set X and then consider a set L of X, I've denoted this calligraphic L of X, as the set of lotteries over X. So we could essentially flip a coin to see who's going to get this painting or take any other lottery over these three particular outcomes. In this case, the bargaining game becomes the following. S is equal to the set of pairs of expected utility numbers for particular lotteries P, where P are lotteries over this set of physical alternatives. Representing this graphically, we arrive at this convex set S. And how do we interpret this? Well, for example, the point uh, where both players receive expected utility 0.5, so this point 0.5.5, 0 .5 would be the case where we are tossing a fair coin to see who wins the painting. Different points along the hypotenuse of this triangular shaped bargaining set correspond to different probabilities of each player winning the painting. And uh, points inside the triangle correspond to lotteries where there is some probability that nobody ends up with the painting. So taking the set of all possible lotteries over these three alternatives and then taking the utility or expected utility image of that set, we arrive at this bargaining set S. A convex set. So that is Nash's model of the bargaining problem. It's incredibly simple and abstracts from all extraneous details. A bargaining problem is simply a non-empty, compact and convex set of utility pairs for two-player games. For n-player bargaining problems, we would just have a non-empty, compact and convex set of utility tuples or vectors of utility numbers. In the next video, we'll begin analysing what are called solution concepts as we look to solve Nash's bargaining problem.